Now that you have an understanding of the different kind of relationships that exist between events, let's move on to conditional probability. Conditional probability, as the name suggests, deals with the probability or likelihood that an outcome will occur given that a certain condition is met. Let's say you've registered for this huge exhibition that has over 100,000 visitors. You need to sign in besides your name at the entrance to get your visitors tag. If you were to scan the entire list to find your name, it would take ages. But if I can place certain conditions such as it starts with alphabet E and is under the student attendee list, it would make life so much simpler as we've considerably narrowed down the search. Conditional probability does the same thing. It makes large sample spaces smaller, so you can easily work with them in real life. I'll illustrate this using a very simple example. I have 10 cards placed in this box right here, numbered from 1 to 10. I'm drawing one card in random. The question is, if I already know the card drawn is greater than 3, what is the probability it's an even number? Now since we have a total of 10 cards, I'm first going to draw all of them. Here they are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Now I'm told that the card picked up in random is greater than 3. It's a piece of information already given to us. So if I apply that condition here, my random card picked up will be one among this. The 1, 2, and 3 are simply knocked off from my calculation. What this does is to narrow down the possible outcomes in my experiment. Instead of looking at 10 cards, I'm only concerned about 7 cards now. Let's draw our new sample space. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And our task here is to find the probability an even number is drawn from these set of cards. If you recall, the way to calculate the probability of any condition is to find the number of favorable outcomes associated with that condition and divide that by all the possible outcomes in that experiment. So probability of a card being even given it's greater than 3 will be favorable outcomes divided by total outcomes. So what are my favorable outcomes here? Even numbers in this set of cards. So that is 4, 6, 8, and 10. And this is to be divided by all the possible outcomes. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 possible outcomes. So my conditional probability is 4 over 7. So what we'll do now is to represent conditional probability using an equation. So it'll be easier to just plug in the formula when working with similar problems. When I have two dependent events A and B, the conditional probability of A given B, that's the way we express it, will be nothing but the probability of A outcomes in B. In other words, if I have a set that contains all possible events that satisfy condition B, how many of those outcomes would also satisfy condition A? So if you think of this, it will be nothing but the number of events common to both A and B divided by the total number of B events. Take the case of our earlier card example. A was the probability of an even number and B 
was a condition that said the card drawn is greater than 3. So our numerator was events that were both even and greater than 3, which was 4, 6, 8, and 10. And the denominator was the total number of outcomes that satisfied condition B, which was all cards greater than 3. So my numerator can be written as PA intersection B, common to A and B, divided by the probability of B, which indicates the total number of B events. So this is the conditional probability formula. Keep in mind that this only holds true if the probability of B is not equal to zero. Because if the probability of B occurring is zero, we cannot possibly have a condition involving it, can we? So in my early example, where I had a box of 10 cards numbered from 1 to 10, Instead of placing a condition that a random card picked up from the box is greater than 3, if I place the condition that the card picked is greater than 10, that would be completely meaningless, wouldn't it? As such a condition could never possibly exist in that particular experiment. Similarly, if you take the reverse, conditional probability of B, given that A is true, that would be the probability of B outcomes in A. or P A intersection B divided by the probability of A as the condition set by us now is all outcomes favorable to A and we're looking at the likelihood that B occurs in A. So looking at these two formulas, what can we say about A intersection B? From our first formula, it would be equal to this. And from the second formula, it would be this. Conditional probability of B given A into P of A. So there are two ways in which we can calculate the intersection of dependent events A and B if I know there are conditional probabilities. You recall what a complement is from the earlier stuff you've learned? A complement of a set is everything in the sample space that is not related to that set. So the probability of complement A is 1, which represents the entire sample set, minus the probability of A. So by applying that same logic, the complement of the conditional probability of A given B would be this, and it would be nothing but 1 minus the conditional probability. So far, if you looked at the card example, we talked about dependent events as the outcomes of A and B were in some way linked together. But what would happen when we deal with independent events where the occurrence of one event has absolutely nothing to do with the other event? We'll take our earlier example of independent events. It will rain today and I will get a pay raise today. Since these two events are completely unrelated, what would be the probability of rain today if I get a pay raise? It would still be the actual probability of rain as your getting a pay raise doesn't affect the weather outside. Vice versa, probability of getting a pay raise will not change regardless of whether it rains outside or it's bright and sunny.
So when I have two independent events A and B, the conditional probability of A given B will be the probability of A. And the conditional probability of B will be the probability of B. 